all you need to know. The Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning. Over the next few minutes, we'll tell you everything you need to know to start your day ahead of the curve. This is the All You Need to Know podcast from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 4th of December. Asian stocks have started the day with cuts of between 0.2 and 0.6% for the early risers. This after a massive rally in global equities following the announcement of a truce in the trade war between the US and China. In fact, US stocks climbed smartly with the S&P 500 and Dow climbing a little over a percent and the Nasdaq ending higher by 1.5%. There's an interesting update in the market for U.S. Treasuries. Three-year yields climbed above the five-year ones, showing that traders are pricing in the end of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hike campaign. Ten-year yields steadied below 3%. Indian stocks, as you know, missed out on that global rally, likely because of concerns over rising crude oil prices. Brent crude having gained sharply after a now famous handshake between Vladimir Putin and Mohammed bin Salman was at $61.7 per barrel last I checked. And that concern weighed on the rupee as well. Snapping its four-day rising streak, the Indian currency dropped 87 paise in trade yesterday, its biggest single-day loss in more than three months. It closed at 70.46 against the US dollar. Here's some more news from back home. Sun Pharma has said that it has not received any query so far from the market's regulator regarding a whistleblower complaint about alleged irregularities in the company. In August 2017, Sun Pharma, its managing director Sangui and nine other entities settled an insider trading probe after paying 18 lakh rupees towards settlement charges. Reports have said that the regulator is likely to reopen the case on various grounds. The NCLT has temporarily restrained nine former senior executives of insolvent ILNFS from selling or pledging their personal assets and securities. The Mumbai bench of the NCLT in an interim order has asked them to disclose their assets, including bank accounts, lockers and personal properties in and outside India. The tribunal has given them three weeks to reply. ILNFS, in case you didn't already know, is being investigated by the Serious Frauds Office. Yes Bank has appointed T.S. Vijayan, who is former chairman of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, as an additional director for five years, bringing relief to thermal power plants owned by Tata, Adani and SR groups. The Gujarat government has passed an order to allow pass-through of higher cost of coal to end consumers. In international news, there's some confusion about Chinese tariffs on automobiles. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said China has agreed to eliminate tariffs on imported automobiles but declined to give details after President Donald Trump jolted car stocks by announcing a deal had been reached. Trump said in a tweet late on Sunday that China had agreed to reduce and remove tariffs on American-made vehicles, raising more concerns about the outcome of his meeting with counterpart Xi Jinping during the Group of 20 meeting in Argentina. It's unclear whether China would reduce its tariffs immediately on cars or as a result of a broader deal. In a briefing in Beijing, only a few hours after the tweet, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Geng Shuang declined to comment on any car tariff changes. Sticking with news in the auto space, former Nissan Motor chairman Carlos Ghosn faces likely re-arrest next week as Tokyo prosecutors add a fresh claim that he understated his income by more than has previously been reported. That's according to a Japanese media report. With that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Darshan. How are we looking today? Hi, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Alex, at this point of time, the global queues were extremely strong. Both the US and Europe ended with a positive bias. Asia is mixed at this point of time. The other important factor is crude. Now, crude was up almost 4% overnight, another half a percent gain in early morning trade. So there is traction there. There was strong close by the base metals on LME. But as of now, base metals in China are trading muted. And the SGX Nifty is trading positive, but that's a mild positive. Uh, it's basically flat to positive at this point of time. 
but lots of news uh, the all important sun pharma conference call happened uh, yesterday the management highlighted no wrong doing and gave clarity on all the recent queries that were raised on the company uh, majority of the queries were answered uh, majority of the queries were related to the whistle blower case in which sun pharma said that they have not received any communication from sebi uh, there were issues relating to aditya medicales which is the subsidiary via which the domestic business is routed uh, they gave clarity in terms of it was done because of uh, you know better tax uh, compliance but they are ready and open for changes in the structure the important factor was that uh, the non non party related loan of uh, over 300 million dollars there was no clarity given to whom that was given so that probably remains an overhang the other stock in focus is gale they've said they will challenge the csat delhi orders demand for a notice of 28 crores at a higher forum uflex global film manufacturing arm gets a us patent covering the entire categories of uh, bopet films ncc receives two orders worth uh, 220 crores for november from state government agencies nmdc revises lump ore prices at uh, 3550 per ton and fines at 3100 per ton uh, this is effective from 1st of december Wellspan Enterprises arm signs a concession agreement with NHAI for a full inning construction project in Tamil Nadu the bid project cost stands at 2000 crores Omax Auto Board approves proposal of setting up a new industrial unit in Uttar Pradesh at a cost of 165 crores in terms of bulk deals Tayo Greater India Fund sold in 11 lakh shares in BLS International all the brokerages that have come out are quite positive on HUL on the deal that they've done Deutsche Bank has come out with a note on Ultratech Cement in which they have kept the target price of 4700 and they believe that the deleveraging will provide strong returns and MK has initiated on Gulf Oil Lubricants with a target price of 1150 which means a potential upside of more than 50% but there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts for that log on to our website bloombergquin.com and click on the all you need to know tab and you'll be prepared for morning trade thank you darshan And thank you all for listening in. As always, there's a lot more on the website over the course of the day, so do check it out. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to all you need to know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you will enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Verma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.